Ladies and gentlemen, uh, that handsome young man in the top left there is Brian Leakey, and he put out a video earlier today demanding that I pay him 10 grand uh, because he thinks he's the first person to get a position fix using a flat earth map. All right, for those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about, uh, well, MC Toon put out a challenge well over two years ago offering 10,000 US dollars for anyone that could present a method for using the principles of celestial navigation on a flat earth and getting an accurate position fix. And the reason that this money has not been paid out is because those of us that actually understand celestial navigation also understand that it's not possible on a flat earth for multiple reasons. But uh, Brian is a little unhappy about this challenge uh, because MC Toon is apparently not allowing Flurfs to use the only map that Flurfs have ever seriously put forward as a map of the earth. Uh, and it's this one, the Azimuthal Equidistant Map. And I've gone on record plenty of times saying that if you can use this map to get a position fix, then I will argue tooth and nail with MC Toon that he should accept the solution. Uh, but in Discord the other day with Brian, I went a step further and said that if he can do McToon's challenge on the AE map, then I will give him the 10K. So Brian published a video a few days ago uh, with his solution. Uh, now these GPs are entirely made up, uh, but that's fine. He's just demonstrating the method. And his method was to use a website called ns6t.net uh, that allows you to create an AE map centered on the GP of each star. And each map has a given radius, uh, which corresponds to the circle of equal altitude. And when he combines all three of these maps, uh, you'll see that they share a common point around Quito, Ecuador. And that was the position fix in Brian's hypothetical. Uh, but the big question is, did Brian use the globe? And to answer that, you actually need to understand what we're really asking you to do when we say draw three circles of equal altitude on a map. Because what we're really asking is, what are the coordinates for all the points that make up this circle? So, for example, uh, and these again are completely made up numbers, uh, we've got the GP of the star at 42 north, 121 west, and we want to know what are the coordinates of the point that is, for example, 1500 nautical miles away at an azimuth of 37 degrees, or more fully, what are the coordinates for all the points that are 1500 nautical miles away in every direction? Uh, but just for this example, we're going to find the coordinates of one point uh, at an azimuth of 37 degrees. And that means we need to do some geometry. Yay! Uh, so this is the AE map. And what I've done is rotate it such that it's aligned on the longitude of the GP, uh, which was 121 west. Uh, the latitude of the GP is 42 degrees north. Uh, so assuming a 60 nautical miles per degree scale, uh, then the GP is 2,880 nautical miles from the North Pole. And then we draw a line that is 1,500 nautical miles long at an azimuth of 37 degrees. And what we want to find are the coordinates for the point at the end of that red line. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, we can actually make a triangle here, uh, and since we've got two sides and the angle between them, uh, we can solve this triangle using the law of cosines to get the length of the third side. Uh, and that length, of course, is the distance from the North Pole. So here's the law of cosines, and if we plug in all the values, we end up with a distance for that third side of 1,909 nautical miles. And if we use the rule of 60 nautical miles per degree, we can work out the latitude of our mystery point to be 58.18 degrees north. Uh, but what about its longitude? All right, so now we use the law of sines to work out that angle uh, between the green line and the third side. And that works out to be 28.22 degrees, uh, which is the change in longitude from the GP. So subtract that from the longitude of the GP and we get 92.78 degrees for the longitude of our mystery point on the circle of equal altitude. 
So just to recap, uh, we've got the GP of the star and we want to know the coordinates of all the points that are 1500 nautical miles away. Uh, but for this example, we've just chosen an azimuth at random, 37 degrees, and the coordinates of that point work out to be 58.18 degrees north, 92.78 degrees west. But what if we use the globe map? Uh, well, in that case, we'll be using the Haversign formula. Uh, now, I'm not going to waste anyone's time deriving the Haversign formula. Uh, if you're really interested, you can just Google it. Uh, so all I've done here is write some very quick Python code, uh, plug in the GP of 42 North 121 West, uh, and I ask what the coordinates are of the point that is 1500 nautical miles away at an azimuth of 37 degrees. And you'll see that it spits out a position of 59 degrees north, 91.43 degrees west. Uh, so a little different to what we got from the AE calculation, uh, and it's about 65 nautical miles away from the position. Okay, so now we know how to work out these coordinates. Uh, let's apply that to Brian's azimuthal projections that he used in his video. So for his first projection, he chose a GP of 40.1 south, 78.3 degrees west, uh, and the radius of that circle of equal altitude was 4,450 kilometers. So here's that map, uh, and what we're going to do is choose a point on this map with a known latitude and longitude, and then see if we can figure out what formula it's using. And I've chosen a point where lines of latitude and longitude cross, just to make it easier. Uh, and that point that I've chosen is 50 degrees south, 40 degrees west, uh, which is just northwest of South Georgia Island. Right, so as before, the, the map is centered on 40.1 south, 78.3 west. And the radius of the map is 4,450 kilometers. Uh, now, using the dimensions of these green and purple lines, I can work out that the azimuth of the point is 123.25 degrees. And by scaling the lengths, uh, I can work out that this map is, is telling me that the point is 3,163 kilometers from the GP. Um, you're quite welcome to do your own pixel counting if you don't believe me. Um, but remember, the question we're trying to answer is, on what map do you arrive at 50 degrees south, 40 degrees west, if you start at the GP and travel 3,163 kilometers at that azimuth? So let's check the AE map first. So again, here's our triangle starting at the North Pole. Uh, we can work out the length of the green side by using the 60 nautical miles per degree of latitude and it comes out to 7,806 nautical miles or 14,457 kilometers. Uh, so again, we can use the law of cosines to solve for the third side and it comes out to 16,406 kilometers or 8,859 nautical miles. Uh, and again, if we divide that by 60 nautical miles to get the degrees of latitude from the North Pole, uh, and that comes out to 57.65 degrees south latitude. And that's already not looking good for the AE map uh, because we were expecting a latitude of only 50 degrees south. Uh, but let's get the longitude anyway. So just like we did before, uh, we apply the law of signs to work out the change in longitude from the GP. Uh, and that works out to be 9.28 degrees. So the longitude of our point turns out to be 69.02 degrees west. So using the AE map, the point that is 3,163 kilometers away from the GP of the star at an azimuth of 123.25 is 57.65 degrees south, 69.02 degrees west. That is not what we were expecting. We were expecting 50 degrees south, 40 degrees west. This is not using the AE map, but is it using the globe? Let's check. So again, let's plug in the coordinates for the GP of the star. So minus 40.1, minus 78.3. Uh, and we wanna ask at the, the coordinates of the point that is 3,163 kilometers away. 
at an azimuth of 123.25. And surprise, surprise, we get 50 degrees south and 40 degrees west. So Brian, this is pretty clear that your three circles of equal altitude are only circles on a globe. They are just simply projected using the Haversine formula. You are using the globe.